Hi everyone, I'm Anya from the Chaos 3D team and today I'll be showing you how to edit your renders using the V-Ray Frame Buffer. I will go through a typical workflow that includes working with layers, masking, editing light sources and light materials in light mix, as well as fine-tuning images in compositing. But before we start, let me remind you to subscribe and click the bell icon to get notified when the next video drops. If you wish to follow a similar approach to editing as shown in this tutorial, there is one important step before rendering any scene, and that's adding render elements. While generally the set of render elements could vary depending on the project, there are a few of them that I use all the time. That is the V-Ray Denoiser, V-Ray Back to Beauty, which then expands as all beauty elements needed to reconstruct the beauty pass, also the V-Ray Light Mix, which enables its use in the VFB, and if you click on the separate emissive materials, this will separate V-Ray Light materials as individual entries in the Light Mix. And last but not least, V-Ray Cryptomat, which I will use for masking. You can also use the Multimat render element for masking, but since it requires additional setup of IDs and there's lots of objects in the scene, I decided to save some time and use Cryptomat instead. And once all of that is said, I proceed with the rendering. Now let's bring this raw render to life and start editing. Usually I will begin by adding a few color correcting layers. Most often I will start with an exposure layer that helps with adjusting the exposure if it's needed, correcting the highlights or adding some contrast, which I will do in this case. Next thing I notice that needs adjustment is the background brightness. It seems a bit bright for my liking, so I'm going to tone it down. Once again, I'll use the exposure layer, but as you can see, it is applied to the whole image. In order to limit it only to the background, I'll use a mask. Simply select the Cryptomat mask and pick up the objects to be included. You can always switch the preview of the mask and remove unnecessary elements. Now the exposure layer is affecting only the objects in the background. Now I will add a hue saturation layer and add some saturation in order to make the colors pop a little bit more. You can also use the hue saturation layer to test out alternative colors for some objects in your image. I will duplicate this layer first and then just like in the previous step, add a mask to the layer and select the object. Now all changes will apply only to the watering can. I think red works well here, so I'll switch off the layer's visibility for now and we'll get back to it later if I change my mind. Before moving on to the light mix, there is just one more layer I want to add and that would be the filmic tone map. It's a quick and easy way to make the image stand out even more. You can toggle between the different options and see which one suits your image better. Ampas works well in this case. And if you find the effect to be too strong, simply lower the blending opacity until you like the result. Alright, that would be the base color corrections. There are more layers that could be added. For example, I could tint the shadows and midtones with the color balance, but I prefer to do general adjustments first and do the additional fine tuning layers at the end. So in this case, it's time to do some adjustments to the lights. I noticed that the light above the umbrella is too strong, so let's start with lowering its intensity. Something around 0.5 looks well here. Next, the neon signs on each side of the robot can use some work in order to make them a bit more interesting. Both of those signs are geometry with very light materials applied to them. If you remember, when I was adding a light mix render element, I checked the separate emissive materials. It breaks down emissive materials to individual adjustable entries in the light mix. If the separate emissive materials is not enabled, then all Vira light materials will be combined together under the self-illumination light mix entry. In that case, if you want to change their intensity or color, you would have to go back to the scene, edit the light material and render again. 
I'll start adjusting the signs by increasing the multiplier on the right one. I wouldn't recommend increasing a light's multiplier by a lot because that might produce noise in the render. Instead, it would be better to render the lights with higher intensity and then dim it down. Now let's change the color of the left blue sign to something else. You'll see that if I want to set it to red, the result is actually a slightly different color from the one I selected. That happens because the emissive material already has a blue color applied to it and it is now multiplied by this new color. If you're not yet sure what kind of color you want to use for your light, it would be better to render it white and then try different colors in light mix. Let's also change the light materials of the robot and make them colorful. First, I'll make the ears slightly green. And the ones on the body, a warm yellow color. You can always apply the changes back to the scene lights by hitting the To Scene button. Alright, I think the rest looks fine, so let's send the light selects from Light Mix to Composite for additional post adjustments. In Composite mode, you can work with the separate render elements like reflections, refractions, global illumination, and so on. This gives you more control over the image if some additional fine tuning is needed. Keep in mind that ideally, the Light Mix and Back to Beauty workflows are two separate and mutually exclusive methods. The example I'm showing you here is based on light mix as a base image structure with additional effects derived from the Back to Beauty workflow. That's why once I click the To Composite button, the Back to Beauty folder automatically switched off. Now let's work with some of the render elements. First, I'll create a folder in order to keep everything organized. Now let's add render element and here I will select reflections. I would like to make only the puddles on the ground more reflective and just like before I'll use a mask for that. Simply select the crypto mat and pick up the puddles on the ground. Now I can adjust the reflections and give them some tint. There is also an ideal perspective in this scene, but now it is kind of lost and there is almost no separation between the foreground and the background. So let me add another render element and this time I will select the very atmosphere. I will add some tint to it to make it slightly more bluish. Okay, we're almost done with the image. There are just a couple of finishing touches I want to make. Now that the main adjustments are done, it's easier to work with the details. That's why I like to add a color balance layer at the end. I'll add a bit of blue tint to the shadows, a bit of yellow and green in the midtones, and finally, I'll add a bit of red to the highlights. Since every image is different, don't hesitate to experiment with the values and see what works well for you. Last final touch, I will enable the lens effects. The lens effects on the robot take too much attention and I want the focus to be on the flowers instead. So I will mask the lens effects as I did with the other layers. I'll add a crypto matte mask and pick up the spheres inside the flowers. In this way you have more control over the lens effects and can include or exclude specific lights, materials and objects. And with that we are done with the edits. Of course there is always room for improvement and we can continue tweaking the image but you get the overall idea. Once everything is done, you can save the layer tree preset and apply different presets. 
In order to be able to use this option, you need to set a path for presets in the VFB settings. Under the Layers tab, Presets Path. As you can see, it's pretty easy to add the different aspects of your image in the VFB. You can experiment with lighting, colors and mood, adjust specific objects with the help of masking, as well as do multiple color corrections and create polished renders. I hope you found this tutorial useful. If you did, please give it a thumbs up so we know what content you'd like to see more of. If you have any questions or specific requests for future tutorial topics, please let us know in the comment section below. Also, don't forget to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell so you don't miss any of the awesome content we've planned for you. Thank you for watching and see you next time.